Hey, I want to take some time today to do a top 10 list, but I want to do it a little bit differently than I usually do my top five or my top 10 lists. Usually I'll do what I think are the top 10 best somethings or what I think are the top five worst somethings, you know, along those lines. But today, like I said, I want to do something a little bit different. Today I want to deal with guns that came out in 2018 because, you know, we're all talking about the guns that are going to come out in 2019 that we're looking forward to. So I want to talk about ones that came out in 2018 that I was looking forward to or maybe you were looking forward to, but for one reason or another, just didn't get over. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the term get over, that's a wrestling term. It means they didn't become popular. People didn't buy into them. Uh, now, these aren't going to be bad guns. I'm not going to put guns on the list that you know came out and just didn't do well because they're crappy guns. There aren't going to be any Remingtons on this list. These are going to be guns that I still think are really good guns, but for one reason or another, they just didn't make it. And I'm going to rank them from 10 to 1. Uh, the one that didn't make it that, you know, that I'm kind of the least surprised about and the one that didn't make it that I'm the most disappointed about. Number one will be the one that most disappointed me that it didn't make it. Number 10 will be the one that I'm, yeah, I don't really care with, but it didn't make it. Uh, now, I'm only going to do five today. We'll do a total of 10, but you can't expect me to do all 10 in one day. I'm old and I'm lazy. Uh, if I try to do 10, I'd probably have a stroke or something here on camera. But today we're going to do the top 10 through 6, and tomorrow we'll do 5 through 1 of the top 10 handguns that I think are great guns, but for one reason or another, flopped or fizzled when they were introduced to the market. Now, the gun at number 10 is the Ruger Security 9. Now, I am really surprised that this gun didn't become more popular than it actually did. This gun is very inexpensive, and I think of it as kind of a bigger version of their very successful LCP. So they were very successful with the LCP. This was a bigger version of that gun for people who wanted a more full-size gun, but still wanted that bare bones, inexpensive, reliable handgun like the LCP was. And for some reason or another, it just didn't take off. I mean, you can get these things for under $300. Like I've seen them for $289. And they're a decent little gun, especially for $289. But for one reason or another, most people just said no thanks when they were looking for a budget handgun. So this gun really didn't live up to what I thought it would do in the open market. So at number 10 is the Ruger Security 9. Now, at number nine is the first of two revolvers on this list. It is the Kimber K6S 3-inch revolver. Now, I am surprised this gun didn't do better than it did because a lot of people said, hey, you know, we like the fact that it's, uh, you know, not double action, single action, that it's double action only with what people really want in a revolver. Now, I didn't agree with the people that said that, and it seems like I was kind of borne out because even though this gun offered that same revolver with a little bit better ballistics, people didn't really go for it. And I think the main reason this gun didn't get over was because Kimber didn't listen to the people that were buying the gun, like me, the true revolver lovers. The K6S was definitely a gun that was built by committee, and I don't think a lot of those committee members actually shoot revolvers. And when people like myself were wanting them to come out with a hammered version of the K6S, instead they doubled down and did a hammerless three inch model last year. And I think that ticked a lot of people off because they didn't listen to what we really wanted. They doubled down with the three inch barrel. Now they're giving us what we want this year, but that year they didn't. So I think that's why that gun just didn't become popular with anybody. Now at number eight was a gun I was thrilled to see and it was the return of the auto mag. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Automag, it's that very unique looking high caliber handgun that was made very popular by Clint Eastwood. So this is another gun that Clint Eastwood has made very popular in his career. When I saw this gun at SHOT Show, I was ecstatic. Couldn't wait to own one. And then I saw the price. And I think that's the main problem. I think that's why this gun hasn't become more popular with people and hasn't sold better than it has. It's because the price is just too high. They put these things at nearly four grand. That is high-end custom 1911 price range. So I just can't see people paying four grand for something that's more of an oddity than anything else. When you have other guns out there like Kunin, etc., that are available cheaper that have similar ballistics. So I think it was price that killed the auto mag, but 
Price alone is enough to make it number eight on my list of flops and fizzles. Now at number seven on this list is a gun that I hate to even mention because I hate the company so much, but it's the Springfield Armory XDE. Now this is basically their very popular and very successful XDS series gun, but now with a hammer in double action, single action, hammer fired configuration with a manual safety. This gun is a perfect example of a manufacturer listening to what people want. If you're someone that frequents the gun forums, you'll know a lot of people are saying, you know, I would like to have a small gun that's double action, single action, hammer fired because I don't feel comfortable with striker fired. And a lot of those same people also want a manual safety. This is something that's very common. So this gun did all of that. Uh, like I said, it's just basically their XDS, but now it's for uh, made for those people that wanted a hammer-fired gun and wanted a manual safety, and I thought people would eat it up. But I think a lot of people hate Springfield Armory, just like me. If you're in the know and you know what Springfield Armory did to damage the Second Amendment just to make a profit legally, uh, you would not support Springfield Armory. I can't imagine anyone out there that cares about the Second Amendment would support them if they were in the know. So I think that affected this gun's sales. That's why it did not take off. That's why I don't think it's anybody's favorite gun. So it just didn't get a good market share. And I think it's because of the hatred for the company that makes it. And that's why at number seven on this list is the Springfield Armory XDE 45 ACP. Now, at number six on this list is a gun that I think might surprise some people, and then again, might not surprise some people. And it's the Glock 19X. I actually bought one of these guns, and I thought they'd be a lot more popular than they are. But I think a lot of people felt that this Glock, the 19X, was the answer to a problem that didn't exist and to a request that no one made. Uh, a lot of people know, are known to put smaller slides on larger Glock frames to get more capacity, but that doesn't really make sense for a gun that's mostly a carry gun. Why would you make a gun as hard to conceal as a full-size gun, but give it the ballistics of a compact gun? Just didn't make a lot of sense with a lot of people, and I think most Glock lovers it didn't even make sense to. So it didn't really take off like it should. I don't think we'll see it around for very long, to be honest, because most people just didn't care for it. I see them flooding the secondary market for people who bought them right away like I did. I bought mine and gave it away to a viewer, so hopefully they're still enjoying theirs. But like I said, it's compact size uh, slide, so compact ballistics on a full size frame, so it's just as hard to conceal as a full size gun, just doesn't make a lot of sense on a gun that's mainly made for people to carry when they want to carry a dependable gun. So the Glock 19X, I think, definitely deserves to be number six on this list, and it is. Well, that's 10 through 6. I don't know if you'll agree with my opinions here or not, but that's the wonderful thing about opinions. We don't all have to agree. If you have any guns that you think should have been on the list that weren't, let me know in the comment section below, or let me know what you think of the choices I made. But remember, we still got five more to go through tomorrow, so don't think this is the end of the list yet, because we got, like I said, five more to go. So tune in tomorrow for the top five guns of 2018 that flopped or fizzled for one reason or another.